So hello my friends, Devon Lennox here, Photography P. Com. In today's video, I want to talk about your dominant eye. Note you can find timestamps in the description down below. You can also scrub through the video to skip to a more relevant section if you'd like. But with that said, let's get started. Most of us know we have a dominant hand for most tasks, especially writing or throwing. But did you know you also have a dominant eye? And strangely, your dominant eye may or may not be the one you're using right now to compose using your camera's viewfinder. Eye dominance is usually not a topic that comes up frequently in the real world unless you're looking through single lens optics like telescopes and gun sights. But as photographers, we rely on the viewfinder, a single lens optic every single day. Yet most photographers aren't aware of their dominant eye and are likely using their non-dominant weaker eye to photograph. Thankfully, figuring out your dominant eye is quite easy and it's a quick change that can make and improve your photography. But with that said, what is a dominant eye? Technically speaking, a dominant eye, sometimes called the leading eye, or generally referred to as ocular dominance or eyedness, is our tendency to rely on one eye more than the other. And this happens because our dominant eye relays the most accurate input to the brain, letting it produce more accurate information about the positioning of objects in our visual field. Most people discover whether they're right or left-handed early in life, and we all favor one hand over another. In fact, you're likely using that hand right now. Our dominant hands give us more precision, better coordination, and more strength, while many of us find our non-dominant hands slightly difficult, slow, and tedious to use. So it's no surprise that our dominant hand becomes our go-to for most activities with time. The same thing happens with our legs, feet, and our eyes. So the next question is how does the dominant eye influence us and how does ocular dominance impact how we see the world? Well, simply put, our dominant eye helps improve our eye coordination by accurately positioning objects in our visual field. Here's a quick test of this in action right now. Focus on a distant subject in front of you. Now alternate closing each of your eyes. Did you notice that the objects appear to move slightly when you're switching eyes? This is the phenomenon of ocular dominance in action. Now, some think the dominant eye has better vision, but that's not always the case though, since vision varies from person to person. Instead, it impacts the positioning of objects in our field of view, which I mentioned before. As humans, we see the world with binocular vision, and we use two eyes to create a three-dimensional image. But since our eyes are separated, there's a viewing error between them, which we call a parallax error. Because of this distance, each eye sees slightly different images or points of view, and has some somewhat different depth perception. To compensate for this, our brains rely on our dominant eye to determine the true location of objects around us since it relays the most accurate information. Of course, our other eye still works, but it only offers secondary information to give us better overall depth perception and more details on relative distances. And actually using our non-dominant eye alone would cause us to misinterpret the location of objects, which could potentially injure or kill us if we're in danger situation. But quick commercial break. Did you know Photography PX launched a sister company called PXPresets.com? Well, if you didn't, PXPresets.com is going to be your next one-stop shop for Adobe Lightroom desktop and mobile presets. On PX Presets, you can find a large selection of presets to shortcut the process of getting high quality images and consistent branding across your imagery. We have a large selection of styles that are well suited for food, products, portraiture, fashion, beauty, and much more. We're also running a special right now for our mega collection. So if you want to upgrade your entire workflow in one fell swoop, now's a great opportunity. So if you're in the market for some high quality Lightroom presets to shortcut your workflow, feel free to check out pxpresets.com. With that said, back to the video. That said, what are the benefits of using your dominant eye and how can photographers use it to make better images? 
First, better framing and compositions. The most direct way to improve your photography is by using your dominant eye when looking through your camera's viewfinder and composing a photo. Doing so will help you create better compositions with more accurate framing. The reason is that this eye provides more accurate information about the position of subjects in our visual field of view, and it's the basis of how we create the visual field altogether. So if you're a landscape, street, or journalism photographer, using your dominant eye is the best way to get the most specific framing in camera. Next, you can see around you while composing. When using your dominant eye, you'll eventually realize you won't have to close your other eye while composing a photo. And it may seem unnatural to leave both eyes open, but there's a massive benefit to doing this when you get accustomed to it. Namely, you can observe the scene around you with your other eye, which is great to see what's happening outside of your camera's frame. And this is a key technique that's essential for street and photojournalism photographers. Next is less overall eye strain. Using your dominant eye also makes photography less visually stressful and exhausting since your eyes don't have to readjust constantly from pure darkness to the ambient lighting. So no more experiencing fatigue by closing your eyes for prolonged periods. And lastly, better detail. This isn't conclusively evidence-based, but you may notice more details when composing or focusing your camera. Everyone's vision is different, so the effect is very likely minimal, but if you do notice there's an advantage, you may as well take it. So now, how do you figure out your dominant eye? The easiest sighting test to do this is called the Miles Test. It's easy and doesn't require any specific equipment or knowledge. In fact, do it right now if you have the time while you're watching this video. Here are the steps. Extend your arms out in front of you so with your palms facing out. Now bring your hands together to form a small triangle between your index finger and thumbs. With both eyes open, focus on a distant object through the center of the hole. Now close your right eye and answer this question. Does the object in the center hole move out of view? If it does, your right eye is dominant. If it doesn't, your left eye is dominant. It's important to know why you're doing this as you're doing this, you alternate eyes and you answer that question. But it's important to point out that ocular dominance ranges on a spectrum and it varies from person to person. So it's possible after doing this exercise, you may realize you don't have a dominant eye, but that's very rare. Instead, you may have likely noticed that your visual target is not perfectly aligned with either of these tests. And that means that you have mixed or alternating ocular dominance, meaning each of your eyes performs different duties depending on the task. So one eye is probably dominant for certain tasks or functions while the other eye is dominant for others. Also, after doing this exercise, you may ask, is it possible to change your dominant eye? For example, if you're shooting with your non-dominant eye right now, and that answer is yes, you can change your ocular dominance to some degree. And some researchers believe there's some plasticity here, but at a bare minimum, you can train yourself to become more comfortable using your non-dominant eye. And one of the primary means of doing so is by wearing an eye patch, which will forcefully relax your dominant eye. Now your brain can focus solely on the weaker eye, and in time you'll adapt to become more reliant on it overall. But to conclude this video, knowing which of your eyes is more dominant will help you accurately gauge your camera's focusing and create a better overall composition. Of course, there are situations where using your non-dominant eye will become helpful in taking photos, but for most photographers, the dominant eye will ensure you create the best images possible. I find it interesting that in athletics and sports like shooting, archery, or football, ocular dominance is a crucial skill that trainers emphasize to improve the athlete's vision, yet in photography, it's often an overlooked subject entirely. Hopefully, you didn't realize by the end of this video, you've been composing with the wrong I am struggling this entire time with framing or focusing your camera, but at least if that's the case, you now have some insight. Thank you for watching today's video. I hope you found the content of it valuable, insightful, and you learned something meaningful here. If you're new to our channel, please consider subscribing if you haven't done so already. If you have any comments, questions, or feel like I've overlooked something in the course of the video, please let me know down below. I've been your host, Devon Lennox, Photography P. Come.